Um, so the truth is, when I was, when I was in high school, um, I actually hated English literature. And, um, and, and what's ironic is that when I went to college a year later at George Washington University, not only did I become a dual major in English literature and creative writing, but I did it, I did it with a concentration in poetry. Uh, and when I reflect back, I actually attribute this sort of sudden shift in perspective to actually one, one particular teacher, Dr. Brent, um, who really had a profound impact uh, on me personally, although I didn't really know it at, at that time. Um, the way I remember her, she was you know, elderly, curly-haired, soft-spoken, um, who had a real true passion for helping people find their, their sort of inner artist. Um, and despite my hatred for English literature, she ultimately helped me recognize my creative potential, um, something that ultimately would be stripped away from me when I entered medical school, and I'm sure some <laughs> of you can probably relate to that, um, but that's a story for another time. So writing poetry eventually became a sanctuary for me where I could express my ideas, um, thoughts, and really unleash my my uh, bottled up creativity. And so today, I'm actually gonna share with you for the first time a poem that I wrote back in college. Um, and I've never shared this with anyone uh, ever before. I don't even think my family has ever seen it. Um, so please excuse the amateur nature of, of the poem. Um, uh, and I can't really recall why uh, I wrote this, um, but I felt compelled to write a reactionary response to Robert Frost's famous poem, The Road Not Taken. And I don't know if it was out of anger or frustration, um, but, uh, and, and clearly you can see my font selection at that time was not my strong point um, at all. It's gotten better. Um, but let me recite this poem for you. So it's, it's called Soon We Shall Meet Robert Frost, a response to Robert Frost's poem, The Road Not Taken. Do not turn back on this road you took, the one less traveled by. Keep trotting among the yellow woods and see why, why this road was left untouched, unmoved, and not taken. I stand awaiting here at the end of the road, the road where the other path has ended. For I took the road mostly taken, and soon you will realize why. I did not fall for the grassy glamour of the other and saw no need for wear. My path seems shorter and quicker and wiser as I stand here waiting for you. Until we should meet at the point where the one meets the other, two roads diverged in a wood and I Yes, I took the one more traveled by. Two roads converged in a wood, and that has made little difference. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm sure everyone's probably glad I didn't ever become a poet as, as part of my career, but, you know, sadly, I used to subscribe to this thinking back then. Um, and I believed we needed to walk a path that was paved for us. Um, because that's what the world expected of us. Um, and it took many years of adventures, experience, failures, uh, to really recognize that that wasn't the truth at all. Um, you know, to change the world and make a big difference and an impact in the world, we need to write our own life script um, and go down the road not taken, as Robert Frost suggested. Um, and if we don't do it ourselves, you know, we're, we're essentially running the risk of having others do it for us. Um, and, and forever living in the shadows of expectations. So this is, I tell you this because this is in part the founding story of Unusual and why we're here today and why I'm bringing you all together here today. Um, I've now spent my entire career carving unusual paths, sort of creating my own path forward, connecting dots and people, um, innovating at young startups, at mature corporations, um, and seeking many perspectives to really help me grow both personally um, as well as to better innovate professionally. And now, really, I'm trying to find ways to bring that to the masses and to the people that I interact with and intersect with and all of you here. Um, and along this unusual journey over the years, I've learned a very simple truth. Um, and it's a very humbling truth. And that is, the more I interact with people and learn new things from them, the less I actually know. Um, and I came to this realization, actually, um, a couple years back. And the realization actually came from my son, who was then four years old at the time. Um, and we were driving, I was driving him to school, and he's you know, sitting in the back seat, and it was a nice sunny day, and the sun's going in and out of the trees, and he's just gazing out the window. And he turns to me, and he, he says very quietly, he says, look, Daddy, the sun is playing peekaboo. And my natural reaction at that time was, you know, that's not how the world works, that's not what it is, but I actually just sat there for a second, and I just sort of 
you know, let him sort of marinate in a sort of pure sense of, of, of innocence. And we lose that perspective as we become adults, right? We're sort of confined by the thinking that essentially people expect us to think or sort of the silos that we think within. And we need to sort of break free from that. That's a little bit of the story of unusual and the intersections. Um, so if you think about it, we're all really defined by the experiences we're exposed to. Um, and if we think of the vast world around us, um, our exposure is very limited. In fact, we know very little about the world um, that's around us. Yet we still generate our ideas, we innovate, lead our businesses, solve our challenges with such limited perspectives. And I feel like this needs to change. And I'm going to make a small move with unusual um, to helping doing that. Does anyone know what this number represents? And for those, oh, oh. <laughs> Does anyone know what this member represents? And for those who read my blog, don't blurt it out. For those who don't read my blog, sign up for my blog. Because um, then you'd know the answer to this. Say it. The, what? Say it first. It's 43 gajillion, kajillion, gadrillion, um, and on and on. Any guesses? It's on your seat. Right? It's the number of permutations um, that are possible with, with a Rubik's Cube. Um, and, and, you know, I like to think of the Rubik's Cube as actually a metaphor for unusual um, and for this event because it's become a source of inspiration for our thought process um, as well as our branding inspiration. So if you see a lot of the branding around done by our, our, our beautiful collaborators at, uh, at Brand Live, um, done some wonderful work. But it, in fact, actually, this, the invention of Rubik's Cube, and for those who don't really know it, by Erna Rubik, um, is actually a story of intersections itself. Um, and catch me in the hallway and I'll tell you that story of intersections, but it was really an accidental innovation that was created by sort of blending a couple of different things that were in the process. Um, so we've shared with you this sort of branded momentum as a sort of a source of inspiration to remind us of two things, really how little we indeed know of the world, the number of permutations that are out there, um, but at the same time how important it is for understand each other's perspectives. And the way I see it is everybody in this room is really a piece of that cube, if you were to take it apart, right? And why we bring you together. Um, and it's really up to us to really connect in new ways um, and that makes sense for all of us uh, to solve our biggest challenges. So together, I think, if we put the cubes together, all of you in this room, we can solve some of our biggest challenges. And the question is, is how are we going to put that together? Um, and this is one small step to doing that. So this is really the story of Unusual. Um, it's, not a, it's, it's, it's really a story of, of you, um, of all of us, um, and the unique perspectives that reside in all of us. Um, so through Unusual, we hope to reimagine a world of new innovative possibilities. I think I've got a slide on it. Um, so this is essentially us. You know, it's a storytelling media expedition celebrating human ingenuity, diversity, imagination. Um, how do we do it? By connecting unique perspectives in ways never before imagined to fuel innovative thinking. And this really opens up a whole new sort of, of approach and, and ways of dealing with things um, that we haven't really thought through uh, fully yet. Um, so here I am today in full circle realizing my creative potential thanks to the influence of Dr. Brent, my high school English teacher, um, and all of the others, and there's a number of people in this room, and you know who you are, who've truly had an impact in my life both professionally um, as well as personally. Um, and so my personal journey has itself been sort of a series of intersections along the way. Um, and this is the first step of what I hope will be a series of events that we'll be able to put together to solve some of our, big, our biggest pro problems. Um, so I hope you'll join me in taking the road less taken. Um, together we can discover what's possible, forge ahead, carve new paths, and create new playbooks. Um, we're only limited by the imagination that we have, and so I really need you to help me in this process. Um, We've got a lot of ideas in the works and how we can sort of extend this, doing you know, private corporate workshops around intersections, doing documentaries, uh, you know, doing different podcast series and holding different festivals and events. There's tons of stuff out there. There's a feedback form you guys should have picked up um, that basically as you go through the day, fill that out. I would love to hear your thoughts about your experience today, what you'd like into the future, someone else that we should invite, or just some ideas and ways that we can actually take this to, sort of to the next level. Um, and I would love to collaborate and interact and just sort of hear your thoughts on that. So please jot down your notes and drop that in a box that I think is back at the back at the registration table. Make sure you sort of fill that out and drop it back, uh, drop it off in that box over there. Um, 
So before we get started, actually, I'd like to take a moment and recognize our most amazing sponsors um, that have helped make this event happen. Um, I've got amazing and, and, and great friends over at Genentech, and I'd love, you know, Nancy, if you could just raise your hand or if you want to stand. Um, she has been a supporter, an advocate, a friend, everything that you can imagine um, that reflects not only um, her and, and who she is as an individual, but also reflects a lot of the work that Genentech is doing as well. Um, and, and I love uh, their forward thinking um, support um, in helping make this event really possible. So thanks to Genentech for, for having us all here uh, and making this day even possible. Um, we also have a host of a lot of other supporters. Um, I mentioned some of them earlier today. TEDx and Atlantic, our friends over there have been great friends. Um, and support and guidance in, 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 in getting this event across. In fact, they just wrapped up their two-day event um, next door at the Sydney Harmon Theater. Um, and they were such strategic partners. In fact, they themed their event intersections to align it with ours uh, as well. Um, we've got Barrel Oak Winery, which we've been, we've been having the wonderful wine downstairs. Brand Live um, is, is sort of the nucleus and really making this event seamlessly happen behind the scenes. You're in the loft, and they've been just been wonderful partners in, in, in pulling it off in this wonderful space. Um, Idea Press Publishing, which is which is owned and operated by Rohit Bhargava, one of the speakers here, um, and he's you know donated and contributed his books as well as part of a, a gift bag. Um, our friends over at ILO are sort of um, uh, you know Peter Thames is basically here to help uh, you know figure out ways of, of supporting and, and and moving the needle and figuring out what kind of takeaways we can get from, from the group. Um, Cake Love provided those little cake in the jar desserts downstairs. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, Warren Brown you know, sends his regards. He couldn't make it here today um, to, to give sort of a talk on some of his inter intersection thinking, but he's actually a lawyer turned baker, and he's got a great story if you ever look it up. Um, Red Apron provided some of the meats that we had during the brunch. Blue Jacket um, is going to be providing. They've got uh, local craft brews that you will, have, will, will enjoy during the uh, the, um, the social happy hour later on. Heirloom is the one who provided that wonderful brunch experience downstairs. Jocelyn provided the music. Uh, we'll enjoy some, some wonderful taco nibbles at a, a new restaurant that will be opening soon um, called Chaya down in Georgetown, um, for those of you who are local. Brooks Craft has been walking around, if you guys have seen him with, with um, uh, the camera, and he's been wonderful in, in, in taking candid shots of all of you roaming around and and capturing the event um, and the experience. And Skipper Films are the ones in the camera scene that you see behind here. So it really takes a village to pull off an event like this. And I'm deeply indebted to everyone um, that has provided their support. And also, lastly, I want to mention the volunteers that really came forward um, and, and offered their support. And they've just been spectacular since the moment we've interacted with them. So thanks to everyone um, for sponsoring, partnering, and, and helping collaborate to pull this off.